Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and today is part two of building the Matchbox Chinook. And uh, part one, basically, we got the cockpit together and uh, corrected the, uh, the lack of a passageway going back to the cargo compartment, as well as starting to add all the missing detail that should be in the rear end. Now most of the inside of this Chinook is devoid of any detail. There's no seats or anything like that. And it's going to stay that way. However, since the ramp is going to be down, I'm going to be continuing to add detail to the, the hind end here. It's not going to be 100% accurate. Shoot, it'll probably be lucky if it's 50% accurate. Main thing is, is I want it to look basically busy, cluttered, have the basic structures that you should find in the back of a Chinook. As you can see, there's all these ribs in there. I've drilled holes in them. Let's get moving on the build. On looking at pictures of the real helicopter, I realized that there's a bit of a problem with these pieces I installed here. Whereas, yes, they should be straight this way. They should have a little bit of a curve to their underside that follows the line of the helicopter. I've glued another piece underneath here. Now I'm going to have to sand to give it a little bit of curve to make it fit the underside of the helicopter. And then once I've got that done, I can start adding the other bits of framing. Work continues apace. Let's just get a focus on here. You can see that there's a more curved line here, which is more what there should be. This whole structure here, it's still not perfect. It's about three times thicker than it should be. Um, it should just be a, a graceful curving line, or it's a wedge on my model. And like I said earlier, I'm not looking for 100% accurate. I'm looking for, when you look in there, unless you had the blueprints or a photo of a Chinook beside you, you'd look at it and say, yeah, that, that looks right. That's okay. Without a set of blueprints, I'm pretty much just... Starting from scratch, it's probably the best we're going to get. All right, this rectangular piece of plastic that you see here. That's because otherwise there's a, there's a big hollow gap here. And when you look at the back of the Chinook, there's actually a piece of the body there. This side has been trimmed. And then this space you see here is where the rear landing gear comes out. So this side has been trimmed. We're continuing to get close to what we should have here. It's been about a week since I've been working on this. Uh, busy with uh, such silliness such as work. But uh, finally working on this again. And these are the gussets that go halfway up the ramp. Pretty much they will go right about there. No, they're not 100% accurate. They're probably, oh, maybe about 45% accurate. Really, they should be coming to here. And on my model, they're going to be to there. And once again, that's because of the, the part on the kit where the landing gear is. It's a little deeper than it should be. But I think overall, it should give the right effect. We'll see once I get it together. There are those gussets glued in place. Now I'm going to start working on some of the uh, horizontal pieces. Push comes to shove, I think I'm only probably going to have about 10% of the detail that there should be in this area, but once again, it's a lot better than the than the bare ass ass that was there. Well, on the right-hand side of the fuselage, there's some sort of a electrical box with six gauges on it, and this is basically going to be the front of that panel. There actually should be some switches and things on the on the left-hand side of it, I'm not going to attempt to do those. Keep it simple. I was looking for a piece of styrene I could put behind this panel. And then I realized that the uh, that the rectangular sprues that Matchbox gives you would make an excellent electrical box for the back of this. And I suppose if I'm careful, I won't even have to put black in the dial faces. As you can see, the, the horizontal pieces there have been installed. Well, I know some of these ribs are just a wee bit crooked, but I'm hoping that when we uh, 
paint it all gray and dark colors that uh, that won't be too noticeable. Not only that, you have to remember that we're going to be looking in at this through a very small opening. So we'll see how it looks. As you can see, I've added some piping inside there, as well as a couple of control boxes. Nowhere near as much as there really should be inside there, but when we get it painted up, it should look a whole lot better. Now this blank area at the top, there's going to be more detail that will go in there once I've cemented these two halves together. And basically that will hide that seam. I could probably spend another two or three days adding bits and pieces of plastic to the back end of this thing, but I'm happy with the way it looks so far. One more addition before I move on to attaching the fuselage halves and actually before that painting the sides here is I just added these two pieces running along just to tidy everything up and that'll make it easier to put the the roof panels in place later. I finished painting the interior. I used uh, Model Master Neutral Gray with aluminum for the pipes. I also painted inside the main part of the fuselage, although you're really not going to be able to see that. As well for completion, make sure it's uh, all the same color. Here's the other side of the ramp area. Now, it's true when we're looking straight up inside, you're going to be able to see this area here. And this structure on either side is, so far as I can tell, completely unrealistic. There should be, uh, of course, all the structure for the fold away seats. Even if the seats are folded away, you should be able to see all the webbing hanging down and everything like that. I'm just not going to go there. So my solution is, well, I had a couple of solutions in mind. Uh, the first one is, as I was thinking, wouldn't it be awesome if I could put a Hummer right here and have the staring straight out? And that's my preferred solution. However, I don't have a 172nd scale Hummer kicking around. And uh, none of the stores in my area have one. They are out there. With me being ill on and off for the last few months, I really don't want to be using my credit cards to... Uh, order one online. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two pallets, two skids right here, loaded up with some boxes and cover them over with a tarp. And basically when you look up the ramp, all you're going to see is a big heavy cargo load inside there. So that's going to be my solution to the fact that there's no seats or any soundproofing padding or anything in there. That's what I'm going to end up doing. Before I glue this together, one thing I'd like to call your attention to, just as a reminder, in this model, there are many holes that they want you to open up before you uh, glue the sides together. So make sure you don't miss that step. And if we look here at the top of the pylon, you'll see that fore and aft of the hole, where the axle for the rotors, that there's two little divots. Now, I filed those in place because the way this goes together is the axle will get trapped. Now, if you glue all this together, especially if you're using a, uh, a very thin high-speed glue, uh, what will happen is, is that glue will run right into the where the axle sits, and it'll freeze this axle in place. If you file these little divots in place, It'll protect just this little spot from getting any glue on it. And that should keep your axles from moving. You can't use it everywhere, but it should work in this spot. Our next step is going to be to glue the underside in place. And there's a couple of minor fit issues. Overall, it seems to be about the right shape. But when you apply some pressure to get everything in get all the gaps closed you can see that there's a step running along here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some supports underneath here just along the edges and then that way when we glue this on it will tend to keep it flush here are those two pads I've added in here if you are going to build this kit I would suggest that you glue these in before putting the fuselage halves together it makes it a lot easier to get a good join. And I'll be letting this dry overnight. 
So that way if I am putting pressure on it, I don't end up detaching those two panels. All right, at the bottom of the fuselage has been glued in place. Fit is pretty good, but not perfect. There's a little bit of a step here. A little bit of a gap's gonna have to be filled here. A little bit of a gap to be filled there. I've seen worse. Now I've just been trying to level out the worst areas of the fuselage where there was a mismatch in the height of the of the underside, basically here and here. The rest of it's not too bad. And I wanted to do this before putting any putty on because otherwise I would have had to put just a huge amount of putty on to level things out. And of course all this will be lightly sanded so the scratch marks will come out. Now basically I achieved the planing by just taking a knife blade and going across like this until I would gotten rid of most of the mismatch in height. Now this is one of these it looks worse than it is situations. I basically decided I was just going to putty over the entire seam, even the areas that weren't too bad, because once I smooth some of it out, the other areas will stand out. So I basically puttied over the whole seam. Most of what you see here is actually quite thin, and when I sand it out, it'll disappear. While waiting for the putty to dry, I assembled the engine nacelles, as well as the drive shaft that goes to the fuselage. Make sure you actually position it on the fuselage when you add this part to make sure that it's going to line up properly with the fuselage. Then once the, the glue has started to firm up you can pull it away. I've applied putty twice and sanded it in between and I've also done the top of the fuselage. Now before I do anything else I'm going to take just some neutral gray paint. I'm just going to go over the areas that I've puttied and then that way I can see whether I need to do a little bit more puttying and sanding or if we're, we're good to go. Because I don't want to do any more work on this until all this heavy duty you know uh, work has been done because you know you'll end up knocking off things. Here you can see I've painted the areas that were puttied and sanded with neutral gray and I don't see any real serious issues that need to be revisited which is nice. One area that still needs to be done with the inside of our back end here is the roof, the inside of the roof. Now I had some trouble finding some good pictures looking straight up. There was lots of pictures that kind of showed it at an angle, but nothing that really showed this area that I could do uh, detail work from. And then finally I found a picture basically showing a photo etch detail kit for uh, the Trumpeter 135th scale kit. And basically uh, this was a uh, photo etch set made by Edward for aftermarket and uh, I'll put up a slide of that in just a second. Um, I can't remember exactly where I grabbed the photo from but basically it's a promo picture that Edward put out so I'm, I'm going to say that that's giving them credit after all it's their kit. The nice thing is is I can I can use that photo to create my own detail for the back of this 172nd scale model here. Before I move on any farther, I thought I would make sure that the nose was going to fit on all right. And as you can see, it doesn't quite want to sit where it should. And fortunately, this part being transparent, I can see that what's happening is, is the, the nose is rubbing on this corner of the instrument panel. So I'm going to try to file the corner off that and see if I can get that to sit where it should. Success! The nose is now sitting where it should, although it also highlights the fact that there is a gap right here at the top that I'm going to have to fill once I've glued the nose in place. So that should be a little tricky. Hopefully I can 
get it done without scratching any of the transparencies. Although, to be honest, these are not terrifically clear. They're kind of a kind of milky. But we'll just have to work with them. Here you can see that separate part that goes on the top of the nose. So that's been glued on. This was gluing the nose on earlier than I had originally planned. But seeing as I need to fill up here at the top and at the bottom, I felt that really I needed to get it on and get those areas filled and sand, sanded before I did anything else. But I've puttied above the windscreens and down on the lower nose. Looks like even after I sand, I'm going to have to put another application down there. Things are moving along. Before I sand that putty, I just covered most of the nose with some masking tape, and that way I don't have to worry about accidentally putting some scratches on the windscreen. Found that out the hard way years ago. And probably more recently, if I'm honest with myself. Okay, I've done sanding the, uh, the putty down on the nose. I think it blended things together pretty good. Certainly got rid of the giant gash that was at the top of the windshield. I've added a piece of styrene in here, basically to form that central spine that you see in the other picture. Further in, there's going to be another piece on top just to beef it up because it's actually a little thicker there. All right, there we go. Hopefully this does it for all the construction work inside the back end of this thing. What's interesting to note is I've looked at an awful lot of pictures over the last couple of weeks of the back ends of Chinooks, and... Boy, there's an awful lot of variation. I know that the uh, picture that Edward has for their detailing kit, it doesn't have these two little struts. But I've seen these struts in at least two pictures, and I thought they looked pretty cool. So, well, mine's going to get the struts. I don't know if uh, the pictures, you know, represent A, B, Cs, and Ds. I'm sure most of the Chinooks that are flying right now have been brought up to at least the, the D standard. At any rate, this is all the construction work I'm going to be doing. Hope it looks good. I've now finished the interior of the rear ramp area. I painted the uh, the greenish yellow areas. To me, a yellow green. The uh, the color I've seen most often in the picture seems to be a very yellowish green, as opposed to the usual zinc chromate. The rest of it I painted uh, testers. Model Master Neutral Gray. I think I achieved my goal of making the back end look busy and coming as close as I could to the real thing. As well, the engine pylons have been glued on. And the gray you see on there is actually Tester's Lacquer Primer, which I'm trying out for the first time. Seems to dry extremely fast. And it's basically on there just so I can make sure that the seam is it's cleaned up all right. Matchbox gives you two separate pieces for the front of the rear pylon. One obviously is for the U.S. version, which this is going to be, and the other one is for the British version. The British version doesn't have this cutout, so I don't know if that was added for cooling at some later date. And of course here we have the uh, the nose and once again the light gray is the model master lacquer primer I just wanted to make sure that where I had sanded it was fairly nice and smooth so I'm pretty much happy with that this pretty much concludes part two of our Chinook build I'm probably not quite as far along as I thought I would so I don't know if we're going to be looking at four parts in total for this model or if we'll be able to get it all done in three but this pretty much concludes part two. Thanks for watching Dan's Model Works. And we'll see you next time. Keep modeling.